Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 74. Day, day 3074. 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 74. We are on page number 281. And we are about to do problem number 10. Number 10. We'll do two problems. Number 10 and number 11. Dealing with rectangle and parallelogram. Let's take a look at number 10. In the number 10 we are given a picture which I will which will reproduce on the here on the blackboard. We have a rectangle A B C D A B C and D and within the rectangle we are given a diagonal from B to D. We are given a diagonal oh I did a horrible job. And then we have other one that looks something like this, two lines, couple of lines. Let's put them in a different color so that they are easier to be noticed. Something of this nature. There we go. Let's get going. And these are point E and F. Point E and F. We are further told that uh, A to F is, let's put it down, A to B we are told a to B we are told is 5, A to B we are told is 5, A to F we are told is 7, A to F is 7, and F to D, F to D, F to D we are told is 3. As you can clearly see, the picture is not drawn to scale. The picture is not drawn to scale, not because I'm so clever, it just turned out that way. Which is just as well, because you must always remember, the pictures on the GRE are not drawn to scale unless they tell you that it is. Unless you see a caption on it which says drawn to scale, all the pictures on the GRE that they give you, assumption is they are not drawn to scale. Okay, so off we go then. The first question is, what is the area of the, of the rectangle ABCD? What's the area? Area of the rectangle ABCD. Area of... A, B, C, D. Well, area is simply length times length times length times height. Length we know is seven plus three. That's the total length here, which is the ten. Length times width. Length we just established is seven plus three. And the width or the or the or the height, if you like, is five. So just ten ten times five, which is fifty. Straightforward, simple problem. Straightforward, simple problem. So next, they ask us. Area of the triangle AEF. Area of the triangle AEF. AEF. Area of the triangle AEF. An area of a triangle, as we know, is one half base times height. One half base times height. But the problem here is. The problem here is, we do not know AEF, AEF, we do not know the height. It is not given to us. What are we going to do? One half base times height. What does the word height mean? Well, height means exactly what it says. Height means how high is this picture from its lowest point to its highest point? The lowest point being the base. So if you were to redraw this picture, A, E, F, if you were to redraw it, A, E, F, A, E, F. We know A to F is 7. Base we do know. How high is the picture? How high the picture is, how high the picture is, is not this portion, it's not this segment. Height means exactly what it says, as we just said. How high? What's this? The highest point. How high is this point from the base? How high is this point from the base? Well, how high this point is from the base is right here. It's five. It's from here to here. It's five units, and that is our height. 
we do not know we do not need to know the distance e to f e to f is not the height the height is the perpendicular and the perpendicular how high is it from here to here the answer is 5 because b to a is 5 so 1 half base is 7 times high which is 5 so it's just 35 over 2 35 over 2 or if you like if you prefer 17 and a half let's move on to part C part C tell you what let's play with this thing we're gonna we're gonna digress here for a second because it's a it's a quantitative comparison question that appears all the time in the exam and since we have a nice triangle on the blackboard let's make a use of it let's get rid of all of this and now it's a different problem do you understand this has nothing to do with this thing the base is still 7 and we are told that e to f we are told that e to f is at 8 a to f is 7 and e to f is 8 and here's the question it's a, it's a quantitative comparison question completely unrelated to what we're doing we'll pick up in part c in a second so column a and column b we're being asked here to compare this triangle here the area of triangle a e f a e f versus versus 28 versus 28 now listen very carefully there are two kinds of people who will, who will be getting these questions wrong one type is actually a little bit superior than the other let's talk about the people that are a little bit superior a little bit of a higher understanding of the problem and those are the people who understand that the height is this part right here let's put it in blue and as the triangle is given to us as the triangle is given to us this is unknown we do not know the height and since we do not know the height, we cannot figure it out. It's just one half base, which is seven times height, which is an unknown quantity. And because it's an unknown quantity versus 28, they say the answer is D. That's the first type of people who get the question wrong. And as I said, these are people who are of superior level. They, they have a better understanding of the nature of the problem. The other type who also gets this question wrong are the ones who actually have a very poor understanding of geometry and this is what they end up doing they end up assuming they end up assuming that the height is 8 then they end up assuming that e to f is the height and of course they do the work and they end up with 7 times 4 is 28 and they say it's equal and they end up picking the answer choice c and they are also wrong neither of these two answers are correct what is the correct answer here do you know and if you want to do it yourself, as I have told you many, many times in the past, there is nothing there to prevent you from pressing the pause button. Press the pause button, do the problem yourself now. Now that you know that D is the wrong answer, C is the wrong answer, do the problem yourself if you like. Re uh, re re uh, resume the video in a few seconds and then compare your work against what we are about to do. So, it is true, it is true that there is no way of getting the height because height is not given to us height is not given to us so these people were right but height but it is not seven times eight over half which is which is even uh, even less for understanding because that is not the height what we do need to understand is that what we do need to understand is that these questions are called quantitative comparison as i always remind you they are called quantitative comparison and not quantitative computation Nobody is asking us to compute the area of this bloody thing. They're not, they're not asking us what is the area of this thing. They're not asking us that. They're asking us, can you tell me whether the area of this triangle is less than, equal to, or more than 28? And that we can tell because even though we do not know the height, listen very carefully, even though we do not know the height, given the fact that E to F is 8, which is sitting at an angle, if it's sitting at an angle and that's 8 feet long, if the ladder is sitting at an angle which is 8 feet long, then the direct distance from the top to the floor has to be less than 8 has to be less than 8 and this is how we write less than 8 less than 8 we write it like this 8 with a minus sign and this is what we're dealing with so half times 7 times something less than 8 again 2 is going to cancel out with this something less than 8 will give you something less than 4 something less than 4 times 7 we do not know what the area of this triangle is 
But whatever it is, it's got to be something less than 28. Something less than 28 compared to 28, the correct answer here is B. The correct answer is not C. The correct answer wasn't D. It is B as in boy. Big power, part C. Part C. It says length of the diagonal, length of the diagonal BD. Length of the diagonal B D B to D. Well it's B to D. I left out something which which I actually I did not leave out anything because they tell us this rectangle. I thought what I left out was I thought what I left out, I'll show you what I what I thought I left out. I, what I, le I thought what I left out was this part, this this the symbol here telling us that they are all 90 degrees. They are all 90 degrees. But they don't have to show it like this. There is no need to show it like this because we are told it's a rectangle. If it's a rectangle, of course, all the angles are 90 degrees. And since all the angles are 90 degrees, this, this BD that we are interested in, this triangle that we are interested in, B, D, A, A B, D, is a right angle triangle. Let's redraw it. A, B, D. A, B and D. A to D, we just have it, 7 plus 3. A to D is 10. And we know A to B is 5. And we are interested in finding the length of this diagonal right here, this diagonal right here. We can very easily figure it out by simple application of Pythagorean theorem. So let's do that. Let's apply the Pythagorean theorem. Let's call this unknown di diagonal X. And we will have the hypotenuse square, because this is the right angle right here, hypotenuse square would have to equal the square, sum of the squares of two other sides. 5 squared plus 10 squared. 5 squared plus 10 squared is 125, which means x must be equal to the square root of 125. And 125 can be written as 5 times 25, and the square root of 5 is just 5. The square root of five, square root of, square root of twenty-five rather is five. We can take it out, so it's just five root five. Five root five, and that's all. Five root five, and just for our knowledge, if you want to approximate five root five, is approximately how much? We know, we know that root five is approximately two point two, and therefore it is five times two point two. Five times two point two. Something went wrong just now. Can, did you notice what went wrong? What went wrong is that we can no, use, no longer use the equal sign. As we just said, it's approximately equal to. 10 times 2.2 .2 would have been 27, so it's approximately 11. Approximately 11. That's all. How do we know the square root of 5 is 2.2? We talked about it many, many times, and if you still don't know it, watch this video of what I'm going to put on the blackboard. T's, T E A S T's, math, day 3. Don't worry about what it is, just type in, just search for T E A S T's, math, day 3. T is the type of an exam that I tutor also, which stands for Test of Essential Academic Skill. Just type in T E A S, math, day 3. Just like you would search for your GRE math videos. You can you will type in GRE math day 3013 and it will pop right up. Fine. Length of length of BD. That was done. The next thing they ask is the perimeter. Perimeter of ABCD. Perimeter of A B C D which is also a very straightforward question because we know this side is 5 and we know this side is 10 so it's 5 plus 10 which are these two sides and there are two of them 5 and 5 and 10 and 10 so it's 5 plus 10, 5 plus 10 times 2 it's just 30 very straightforward let's move on to the next problem the next problem deals with parallelogram Next problem deals with parallelogram. And we are given a picture which is on the next page. We are no longer on page number 281. We are now on the next page, the very first the very first problem on the next page on page 282. 
and I'm going to redraw the, not redraw rather, I haven't drawn it at all, I'm going to reproduce what has been produced there. In other words, I'm not reproducing it, they produced it and I'm simply reproducing it. Let's not add something that is not given to us yet. What is given to us is this perpendicular, this side. We are told that from here to here is 4. This part is we are told is 2. A to D, A, B, C, D. A to D we are told, A to D we are told is 12. And that's about it. The first thing we want to find out is the area of A, B, C, D. Area of A, B, C, D. How are we going to find the area, area of the parallelogram? Well, in order to figure out the area of the parallelogram, this is what we need to understand. Okay, listen carefully. This is what we need to understand. We have two choices. We can either, we can either pick up this triangle right here. Picture it in your mind. Pick, pick it up and flip it here and it will fit right in here making it a parallelogram making it a parallelogram we have a b c d let's call it point f so this will make a, a f a b c d it should have been e f now it's a e f d what we did is we picked up this triangle what we did is we picked up this triangle d f c and just flipped it and put it here and when you do that it makes what we get here is this part right here. We get a regular we get a regular rectangle. Right here. By simply picking it up and putting it there. And that's all it is. Or we could have done the same thing. We could have chopped up this part here right here and flip it and put it here. Would have been the same thing. A to D, A to D we know is 12. A to E we are told is 4. A to E is same as this distance right here is 4. So it's basically 12 times 4, which is just 48. It's length times width. It's length times width, which is 12 times 4, it's just simple 48. The next thing we want to know is the perimeter of A, B, C, D, which is going to be a little tricky. Let's get rid of this red marker. Parameter of A, B, C, D. Well, in order to find A, B, C, D, we have to redraw this. This is too ugly now. It's too crowded. So we have A, B, C, D is our parallelogram A, B, C, D. We are told that this side is 12. We drop the perpendicular and this distance is 2. We are told that this distance is 4. And what we are interested in finding out is the perimeter. But in order to find the perimeter, we already know this side. This side is 12, which means B to C is also 12. But we need to know this side. This side and this side are going to be the same. We need to find those sides. That's, we need, that's how we're going to find out the perimeter. And for that, we're simply going to make, we're simply going to make use of this triangle right here that we see. This triangle right here. The book does not give this, this, this point right here a name. We're going to give it a name. We have A, B, C, D. Let's call it, let's call it E. So this triangle, C, D, E. Let's redraw it if you like. C, D, E. This is the triangle we're dealing with. And this is side 4 and this is side 2. And we want to find out this side. The hypotenuse. And this is the right angle triangle. Right here because it drops the perpendicular. It drops the perpendicular. They tell, us, they tell us that in the book by giving us the little symbol for the 90 degrees. That's how we know that they're dropping a perpendicular. It's coming straight down. Simple, simple use of the Pythagorean will give, give us CD. So to find CD, to find the distance CD, 
we simply have x squared, which, has to, which is the hypotenuse square, must equal 4 squared plus 2 squared. 4 squared plus 2 squared is just square root of 20. Square root of 20, which if you like, can be written as square root of 4 times 5, and square root of 4, square root of 4 is 2, so it's 2 times square root of 5, x, which of course is approximately 2 times 2.2, which is 4.4 approximately. And now we can find another now we can find another perimeter. The perimeter is simply going to be 12 plus 12, which is 24, plus 2 times this amount. 2 times that amount, 2 times, 2 times root 5, which is just going to be 24 plus 4 times root 5. 24 plus 4 times root 5. Where this where does this 24 come from? This 24 came from 12 plus 12, and this 12 and that 12. And that was the perimeter. Okay, is there a part C? There is part C, and for that we have to figure out the length of the diagonal BD. The length of the diagonal BD. Again, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of the diagonal BD. length of the diagonal BD. B to D, this diagonal right here. BD. Length of this diagonal BD right here. Let's, let's, let's make it a, let's bring this guy over here. So we know from C to E is 4, which means from A, let's give it a point, let's call it F, A to F must also be 4. Okay, pay attention. This is a right angle triangle right here, this is a 4, distance from here to here is 12. Let's redraw this picture if you like, A, F, am I losing my mind? Yes, I'm doing it wrong because I, I did not take the time to redraw it. Let's redraw it properly. It doesn't pay, it doesn't pay the rush. When it begins to get too ugly, you need to redraw it. And pay attention to what we are doing. A, B, C and D. What we want to find out is this guy right here. This guy right there, this diagonal. Well, if you drop this perpendicular here, this distance from here to here is 2. Are you with me? This distance from here to here is 2, if you look at the picture, which means this distance from here to here must be 10. Because we are told that the whole distance is 12. Whole distance is 12. So we have a triangle here, a right angle triangle, where this, this part from here to here, we have A, B, C, D, let's call it E. From E to D is 10, from B to E is 4, we are told, because we are told that this, this distance right here is 4. And we're going to use this triangle right here. E, B, and D. This is the right angle, this is 4, and this is 10. And this is what we want to find out, the diagonal BD. The diagonal BD. Let's find out, shall we? And I understand that this is completely off the scale because this distance from here to here we are saying is 2 and from here to here is 10. You can clearly see they are almost the same distance because I did not do a very good job. I wasn't paying attention to the details and that's all it is. But look, look at the picture that is given in the book. So, four square, x squared, let's not call it x because we keep calling the previous part that we just did. We call it x and it's the same problem. Let's call it y because in the same problem we cannot go around giving the same symbol to two, two, two different quantities because the symbol represents a quantity and they are two different quantities, they must have two different names. Or if you like, you can just call it D for diagonal. 
So diagonal square must equal 4 squared plus 10 squared or 4 squared 16, 116, 116 and therefore D is square root of 116. 116 I hope you're able to tell I hope that you're able to tell right away just by looking at 116 that it is divisible by 4. How do we know if a number is divisible by 4? A number is divisible by 4 as long as its last two digits are divisible by 4. One more time. How do we know if a number is divisible by 2? A number is divisible by 2 as long as we can establish that its last two digits are divisible by 4. Here the last two digits are 16. 16 is divisible by 4 and therefore 116, 116 is divisible by 4. And so is, so is 2116. 2116 is also divisible by 4. And so is so is uh, 32,116 and so is 432,116. This is also divisible by 4 and so on and so forth. It doesn't matter. You understand? If somebody comes up to us and asks us, is 5,432,116 divisible by 4? We don't have to pay attention to the fact that it is 5,432,116. What we need to pay attention is that at the, at the very end we heard 16. And since 16 is divisible by 4, the entire quantity is divisible by 4. Do you understand? So let's divide it by 4. Let's divide 116 by 4. Let's divide 116 by 4. And we don't actually have to do out the work. You must understand that 100 divided by 4 is 25 and 16 divided by 4 is 4. 16 has 4 fours and 100 has 25 fours. So it's going to be answered is going to be 29. But let's do it anyway. How many 4 does 1 have? How many 4 does 1 have? 1 has no 4. What happens to that one? One goes and joins the other one, becomes 11. How many 4 does 11 have? 11 has 2 4s. 2 4s are 8. After we take away the 8 from the 11, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to the 3? 3 goes and joins the 6 and becomes 36. And how many 4s does 36 have? 36 has 9 4s. Voila. So this quantity can be written as 4 times 29. Square root of 4 times 29. And square root of which in, which in turn can be written as, which in turn can be written as the square root of 4 times the square root of 29 and square root of 4 is just 2, so it's just 2 times root 29. The diagonal that we're looking for turns out to be, diagonal that we're looking for turns out to be 2 times the square root of 29. Do you understand? And that's all. That was part C. The next problem as we go there, 12 and the 13, that's a different topic. They're very simple problem, but different topics. They're dealing with circles. And we'll do 12 and 13, those two problems, tomorrow in the next video. And after that, after we have done 12 and 13 in the next video, tomorrow, we'll have two more lessons, two more videos dealing with question number 14. Question number 14, as it is given in the book, we're going to label it as 14A. And we're going to do a bonus problem, 14B. And we're going to do them on two separate videos dealing with the notion of rectangular box, something known as rectangular box, or as they call it, rectangular solid. Same thing. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.